One of the most overlooked parts of paint correction is doing a proper test spot, but it is the key to doing paint correction efficiently. So why is that? How do you do a test spot? Stay tuned and find out. The world of paint correction and polishing is getting more complicated by the minute. And every week we receive hundreds of questions in comments on social media, on videos and emails. We want to answer those questions. This is Rupa's Replies. So this is my personal truck. I use this truck to go off-roading. I pull my trailer, uh, gets me out jeeping in the Rocky Mountains. So it happens to be a perfect specimen for us to talk about the test spot. And there is a very important reason to do a test spot, and that is to gain efficiencies in your whole paint correction process. But before you even do the test spot, you need to know what your desired outcome, your desired goal is for your paint correction. In other words, are we trying to get every single little scratch out? Are we just trying to shine up the paint and get a few scratches out in a one-step process? So we really got to know what is our objective because the test spot's going to help us get there. So what is a test spot and how do we do it? Well, the test spot is really trying a particular combination of compound and pad. And the test spot is going to help us determine which compound and pad and tool and technique is going to get us to that desired result. Now the test spot also is going to help us identify if our paint is on the hard side of the paint hardness spectrum or if our paint is on the soft side. So this test spot based on the result will help us identify the paint hardness, which is really important for efficiency. So when you conduct a test spot on your vehicle, you will get one of three results. Now the first potential result that you might get is exactly what you hope for, which is the target defects are removed, uh, the paint is glossy and clear, it looks exactly the way you hope and the way you want it to, so that is outcome number one. Outcome number two is your target defects are removed, However, you might have a haziness or a gray look to the paint, and this may indicate that our test spot procedure might be a little too aggressive. Test spot result number three is that we have only removed about half of our target defects or some fraction of our target defects. And this may indicate that our paint is a bit on the hard side because our procedure did not remove all of those target defects. To do our test spot, we need to select a compound and a pad to start with. Our recommendation is our DA Fine compound and our yellow DA Wool pad. The reason we recommend this combination for your first run at a test spot is because it is middle of the range for our products and if we need it to be more or less aggressive, then we can go up or down in the whole family of products. But this actually gives us the best chance and the broadest cut and the, the best possibility for finishing. So we're gonna start with this combination. What I'm about to do is not normal part of the test spot procedure, but we are going to put a tape line on this door. The purpose of this tape line is just to help you see on camera the before and after on defect removal. For the sake of time, we've already primed our pad, but if you want to know the importance of priming and how to do that, check out a previous Rupus Replies video. Now looking at uh, the paint here, it looks like we have all our target defects out, but there's just a little bit of a grayness to it which means we could be slightly less aggressive, so we are gonna to go to our yellow foam pad. And once again, we'll, we will evaluate the result of this combination, and this looks fantastic. So what I see on this paint now is we have removed our target defects, but we have no haze, no grayness. It's 
crystal clear paint, very glossy. So this is now our new combination that we will do on this car. So this right here shows you exactly the value of taking the time to do a test spot. Because remember those three outcomes. First potential outcome, it could be exactly what you desire and you reach your objective in one step. The second potential outcome is you remove your defects, but you might have a haze or a gray look to the paint. And in this case, you may be a little bit too aggressive with that combination and we need to find a combination that is less aggressive. And then thirdly, the third potential outcome is we don't remove all the target defects and in which case we will need to step up to a more aggressive combination uh, to reach that objective. Hopefully this information was helpful for you and from now on you'll be doing your paint correction more efficiently. So if you like this video, please click like. We invite you to subscribe to our channel. Please do ask questions and make comments because we may just have your question on our next Rupus Replies.